the soul seekers. Um, you guys have investigated the building? Uh, we've been in here five times. Okay, you know, well, you know what, I, what I'm talking about, where it can be rocking off the wall one day, and then the next, like I always say, they know the best hiding places. They just don't share them with us. There you go. Um, we got a little bit. Uh, I'll go through it. Um, I, I didn't know which, what kind of audience I was going to be working with, whether it was going to be folks who were familiar with paranormal investigations, or you know the building, or whether it was going to be uh, uh, folks like yourself that uh, are more familiar with the building than I am. But uh, when was the last time you guys were up here? Want to make sure you know you're <laughs> I hope so. Anyway, just a little bit about the Coal Region Paranormal Team. Our team has been together for anywhere from seven to eight years. We've been as Coal Region Paranormal Team since 2010. We've split off of uh, another group, uh, Phoenix out of the ashes, if you will. Um, we have members that range from the coal regions of Pennsylvania, such as Shemokin, Mount Carmel, Coldmont, that area. Myself, my wife, and I live in Williamsburg. We've had members down as far as Harrisburg. In fact, our founders um, found their way down to North Carolina on us, and uh, they're enjoying sunshine and 80 degrees, I saw this morning. Mm -hmm. um, while there's no, and, and you guys will, will attest to that, there's no college courses for being a paranormal investigator. There's no degrees, there's no doctorates, there isn't anything like that. If anybody tells you they're an expert in ghost hunting, on the other way. Uh, we're all learning every time we go out. Uh, we hope to learn as much from the spirits and the entities as they learn from us. Uh, we did, we have, some of our members have taken some courses and things like that that are offered, and you guys are familiar with the International Ghost Hunter Society. I work in the juvenile justice system. Um, I have a warehouse, warehouse foreman, um, plumbers, housewives, nurses, you know, there, there's no certain expertise. What's nice is we come from all different walks of life and we kind of bring different aspects into things. Um, combined, our group has done about 500 investigations. We've had the pleasure of doing things like Fort Mifflin outside of Philadelphia, uh, Rolling Hills in East Bethany, New York. That place rocks every time you go. Um, we visited Eastern State Penitentiary, Gettysburg, things like that. And like I mentioned, we had the pleasure of investigating here at the North Hall. In fact, I think I badgered them into it the first time. Manfield University, the paranormal investigations, like I said, we were here on November 5th, 2011, and again on June 7th and 8th, 2003. The second time we were here, we were here with ghost detectives, and it's a two-day thing. Um, we did two full evenings. We started around 5, 6 o'clock at night and ran until around 3 in the morning. Um, it makes for long nights, too. The Legend of Sarah, I think most of you know The Legend of Sarah. By the way, I stole this from the website. Sarah has her own web page, who I was glad to hear. Um, supposedly a student fell from her death, or was she pushed? Uh, you know, it's one of, those, one of those things. Some say she jumped. Many say the building is haunted by your ghost. The lead, there's a lot of variations. You'll hear two or three about what, you know, not certain what floor it was on, you know, things like that. Uh, what we do know for sure is that the North Hall was built in the 1870s, and when it was originally built, it was one of the largest buildings in the Atlantic coast. What we do know is that the renovation and expansion, which added the atrium, or what they call the well in the middle from top to bottom, was completed in 1908. Um, the, bell, the well was boarded up because the Board of Trustees figured out, hey, if there's a fire, it's going to go straight up. Uh, and that was in the summer of 1930s. The 70s, the building was closed, as you guys well know, and uh, it was resurrected into what it is today. So 
So that kind of narrows down if they're looking at this happening between the 40s and the 50s, like, you know, is the popular. We had a problem right off the bat with the legend as far as credibility of somebody jumping down that well. You know, the thing that everybody comes here to hunt for is who is the ghost if there is one? And while there's very many theories, there's never been true anything that they can absolutely positively say this was the Sarah or this. I do know that there was a Sarah that died that went to school here, but she said died at Soldiers and Sailors, I believe. When we came, we, had, we set some goals for ourselves. Number one, is there paranormal activity at, at at North Falls. Number two is, is there, what type of haunting is it? Folks, anything, if you know anything about paranormal investigations or, or paranormal activity, there's an intelligent haunt, which everybody's familiar with. That's the one we we try to speak to and get some answers with, whether we're using like EVPs or uh, K2 meters or things like that. There's residual haunts, which are like, and I'm gonna hate to myself here, VCR recordings that go over and over and over again until they finally wear out. There's poltergeists, what, uh, which you know, telekinetic energy, you know, that type of that type of thing. And there's that the rarest of rare, the, the demonic, which uh, swim to none. Would you agree? Yeah. If there isn't any or, or a ghost by the name of Sarah, is there one present here? And what's the true story of the legend of Sarah? We, I mean, we were ambitious. We, we wanted to know everything. We'll see if we got there. Oh, I forgot. We always have fun. We do this because we enjoy helping people, but we also enjoy this because we want to find out the truth. We want, but we have to have fun. If this gets to be another job. November 5th, 2011. We investigated, we got here about seven o'clock at night. We started the investigation around eight o'clock after we had done a walk through and a tour of the building with Scott DeMarco. Uh, he gave us a rundown of some of the activities, some of the legends. Uh, we went top to bottom. Uh, then we split up our team into different floors. We had one team that was covering the basement and first floor, another team that covered second and third, fourth and fifth, and then sixth and above and on the side was, was the fourth team. And we rotated through the evening. Uh, about every half hour, every 45 minutes, we move people around because sometimes the entities or the spirits will react to some people and not others. I call myself a psychic brick. Um, I don't feel those kind of things. I, I would love to just once, but it doesn't quite happen. During that evening in November, we took about 2,100 pictures total. That were flashes and full spectrum cameras. There were no significant pictures identified out of 2,000 photos. Videotape, five cameras, about 27 and a half hours. Again, no significant findings. While they're not the primary thing, we have to give some presence to, to uh, personal experiences. At 7.43, quarter to eight, on the fourth floor of North Plain, the left-hand side going down through, there's a cubicle wall and then the book stacks. Down in the back left hand corner, one of our investigators reported observing a dark black shadow moving. That actually was spotted three or four times. We tried to recreate it, tried to uh, identify it. We could never do that. We even set up a still camera on that one area and of course we didn't capture anything on the still camera. But the fact that three or four investigators that were independent and didn't, didn't have an opportunity to collaborate identified some type of dark black shadow moving down in that back corner um, is something to, uh, to look at. At uh, 10 after 8 on the first floor, they were standing in the atrium around the uh, seal. They heard voices. They weren't sure which wing it came from, but it was that whispering type, high frequency, and something you just couldn't quite grasp what they were saying. Uh, this, was in the, this was reported about two or three times during that rotation. 
1015 third floor north wing. Investigators reported an unexplained and sudden battery drainage from several pieces of equipment. We use lots of batteries, but when five and six pieces of equipment inside a five minute period start going dead, there's something going on. Uh, usually the theory is, is that this is an entity or a spirit drawing energy in order to manifest, speak to us, move something, to do something, to let us know that they're there. Um, again, it's not something we can document, it's not something we can take pictures of, but the fact that it happens has to be put on the table as some type of evidence. Uh, 1030, fourth floor, North Wing. Reporter, uh, investigator reported having the feeling of being watched or stared at, almost like that paranoia where you know there's somebody behind you. You look behind you and there's nobody there. EMFs, anybody, everybody know what an EMF is? Electromagnetic field. Um, you'll see throughout it, and mostly on the first wing, or on the first floor, we started getting a lot of hits on K2 meters. We went through, uh, swept it with uh, trimeters and uh, also uh, Gauss meters and could not identify any significance to it, any pattern to it. It would be there for two or three minutes. In fact, I'll show you a video clip of the second investigation where we had something in it disappear. Almost like a door opens and closes. EVP, total of 40 hours of digital recordings were taken, and we got two that we would give any credence to. The first one is pretty, pretty obvious. The second one you gotta listen to real carefully. The first one, um, this is the second floor, south wing, on one of the porches, out in one of the porches, the lounges. I was sitting there um, taking pictures with a full spectrum camera and asking questions. And, uh, okay. Buying would help. I didn't hear that when it was there. Truly, we paid. Somebody was definitely didn't want their picture taken. I guess. This was the second one. This was again third floor, south wing. Um, if I remember going in, when you go in, there was a desk on the left hand side. It, I, I don't know if it was like a staff desk or an information desk, something like that. And I was sitting at that desk. That's pretty good, remember that from two years ago. Not the footsteps. Tell me and I'll stop asking. Wasn't heard again, and that's like I said, when you're asking, and you guys know, when you're sitting there and you're asking questions for hours and hours and you're listening to nothing, and then all of a sudden there's something like that. Uh, gold. And again, I can't explain it away. We, I was in the room alone. There wasn't any other sounds. I moved the chair around. I moved stuff on the desk. I can't make it, can't duplicate it. So it's got to be taken into account. 
um, experimental equipment. It's equipment that, at, and at least at this point, we hadn't been using very long, um, but we we put it into the mix because there's, you, you guys been doing this wrong? Wow. Okay. You know as well as I do, when most of us started doing this, there was no such thing as equipment for ghost hunters. You took things like compasses, and that's how you measured your EMF field. You used digital thermometers that carpenters use, because that's the kind of, uh, you used um, meters that electricians use to, to find leakage and wires and things for electromagnetic fields, because that was what was available. As time went on, they started developing things like a ghost box. And the ghost box is nothing more than a radio that scans frequencies on microseconds. So in a, in a say, a two-second span, you may go across 50 channels. And the idea is, is that an entity can take that, that device or take the words from that or the, the white noise from that, and it's easier for them to, to form words. Um, Originally real skeptical about the whole thing. The more and more we use it, the more and more it gives appropriate answers sometimes, most of the time. And it seems to have a lot of more credit, credence to it. Uh, we use it pretty steady now. session, they're the only two clips we got. Again, I can't explain it by normal means. Why only at that time? Is it a coincidence? I don't personally believe in coincidences. Added to some of the other stuff that went on, the first four, we had a lot of EMF readings going on down there. We had, we had hearing of voices, um, you know, that type of REM pod. And REM pod is another EMF device. If you see it, it looks like Simon. Simon says, it's got little lights on it, an antenna, and if you go near it or something breaks the field, the lights all light up. Um, during, in that same EVP rotation, uh, we had a lot of significant activity where it went off several times, yet there was no real change in the atmosphere uh, other than like I said, we were getting some answers on the boxes. We were hearing some things. It was one more piece of evidence that we were able to throw into the, into the pie, so to speak. The second time we were here was just this past June. Uh, we came up with the, with the ghost detectives to film for their season four episode. Um, and uh, the guys brought up a whole bunch of equipment. Uh, and we pretty much saturated this place for two days. What I did do is I took one quick interview of a personal experience and three pieces that, uh, that we got while we were filming this episode. Here's the first. Did you hear that sound? That? I don't know. That's what I was going to ask you. That's squeaking noise? Yeah. There were three of us, there were four of us in that wing. We were all together on the left hand side doing some EVP work and, and some uh, camera shots. That would be great if we started off like that. You heard that, Dan? Yeah. All right. So what we did is set out to do. Bob 
the leader of the ghost detectives had played it back in his real-time recorder to see if we did actually hear what we thought we heard. And then we set out to try and duplicate it. You know, that sounds close to that version. That's how I was thinking. That squeak. Yeah. There's one in every aisle, though. You know what I mean? One of those? Yeah. They're looking at every aisle we can. That's what that sounded like. Yeah, it did. You know, I haven't figured out why every ghost hunting show has to have that background music. <laughs> My wife says it'd be so much easier to hear some of the stuff if they didn't play that in the background. The thing about this is that we were ones that were in that wing, we were all together. We were all within eyesight of each other when that sound was heard. And yeah, they're in every, as you guys know, they're in every aisle. Who moved it? It sounds like when you stand on one. Yeah, and that's when we had moved that first one. If you notice, we tipped it back and forth. and. Yeah, it sounds like one of the wheels setting back up and back down. Well, not to be uh, left alone, the book racks were pretty active. That's a case in the for the EMF detector. That's weird. <laughs> All right, which book is setting it up? They did that clip and nothing set it off. In fact, we put a K2 meter to see if there was any not radiating out through it, and there was nothing coming up through through the floor. Look at that. There is something. Like I said, it's a book on electromagnetic fields. You have to have something. This was an interview they did with me uh, back down on the first floor. We had an experience uh, while we were actually doing a walkthrough. And, uh, 
Can you tell if this is the second night towards the end of the night? During a pause, I was waiting for an answer. We started to hear some piano music, classical piano music. It was coming from this wing that we're in right now, which is the music library here at the North Hall. And then as quickly as it started, it stopped. That seemed to be the theme that whole evening. Whatever activity we had, it was like somebody opened and closed the door. Because as soon as it started, you started investigating, it was gone. Almost as somebody was like, here, 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 well, not yet. And this, actually, this was the very last part of the evening, and Bob looks real happy, can't you tell? Um, this was the very end of the evening. Um, we were in that same room where I was saying I heard the sounds from. that played the piano. Are you here with us? What the hell was that? I heard that too. I heard it in my ears. It said no. Are you kidding? No. That's what it sounded like anyway. Yeah. You guys are familiar with real time? No, I know, I know. They were using you heard it though? I heard my ears. I didn't have that phone on. There's a person that plays the piano. Are you here with us? What the hell was that? No pie. You heard it? I heard it. What the hell was that? There's a person that plays the piano. Are you here with us? What the hell was that? That was definitely a sound. You the person that plays the piano. Are you here with us? What the hell was that? It was echoey, too. Like, it's like an easy piece of the I said, no, we always get. Okay. Yeah. Okay. said at the beginning, we had set some investigation goals. Is there paranormal activity in the, in the North Hall? We, we pretty much answered, answered that, and we'll get into the answers either, or at, right after this. Is there, is there, if there is, what type of haunting is it? We addressed it. Um, you'll see that we really didn't come to an answer about what type of haunting it was. Sarah? I can't definitively say anything that we got says that Sarah is here, Sarah is alive, or what the true legend is. Um, so I guess that remains the mystery of Mansfield North Hall. What we did find is that, the you know, like we said, there's legend of story, there's, there's multiple versions of the story of the legend of Sarah. Based on the research, and thank you for uh, when we were here the first time. Um, it, it's difficult for the time frame that they say that Sarah fell, dove, pushed, for whatever reason. 
it doesn't fit. The evidence doesn't fit. Now, does that mean that Sarah never was here, that uh, Sarah didn't die here? No, we can't say that. But what we can say is that there's some real inconsistencies to the story. Um, you know, no, we're not questioning the reli reliability of the other teams that have come in and gotten, gotten more, more information or more results than we have. It's just that for whatever that evening, we could, possibly, we could definitely say that there's paranormal activity here. But because, you know, the, the question is always, is the North Hall haunted? Our team doesn't deem a, okay, a location haunted just on based on whim or small amount of activity. We can't say that as the uh, Coal Region Paranormal Team. We can say that there is paranormal activity here. Um, there's not enough substantial evidence to say what kind. You know, like we said, uh, it's important to remember entities don't always respond to our time frames. Uh, they aren't actors. They don't appear on stage on stage call. They show up when they want to. And uh, my favorite is that they know all the uh, favorite hiding places. Questions? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> One of the things we always do, and, and again, people ask about when you uh, do haunted locations and, and different types of locations, um, about spirits and spirits following you home and that type of thing. And, and I'm sure, like us, you take precautions with prayers or, or centering and grounding. And we always end the evening after we do all of that by just simply saying, stay here. Um, you can't follow us home. So if there's anything here tonight, uh, do me a favor, stay here. There's many more people that want to come investigate here. Uh, that's basically the presentation I brought with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, I will do a shameless plug, coalregions.com, coalregionghosts.com. We're on the uh, internet. Send me an email. Um, thank you. Yes. Uh, the floor stinking in that area. Like unexplained. Just recently started like caving in. We uh, we spent a lot of time, <laughs> like I said, when we started getting the reaction um, in that area, we put K2 meters, which are little boxes. They look like coffins, mm -hmm. and they have multiple lights on them, and they're very easy to film that way. And we put them up and down the aisles. Um, we did the same using REM pods, and we couldn't get any reaction anywhere else. Um, we tried to go through with meters and trace, like try to find electric lines, turned on and off lights, and couldn't recreate whatever that was, both there and over here, here both, and over here there was the cooking books, mm -hmm. and for some reason uh, Pearl got reactions over there also. Um, like I said, that was pretty much the activity. And the reports and the reports on four north of that shadow and that background were so specific and uh, so many different reports that kind of coincided. That's why we went with a, a camera up there. But again, then I put one up there and it, no idea, no idea at all. But, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, a, a pack person. There's there's definitely entities here in the North Hall, and uh, they like to hang out. I think they like to play games at this point, too. Did you guys agree? Oh, yeah. Did you uh, use any trigger objects when you guys came here? Or? I'm trying to think. No, we did not. We did not. Did you try any? Uh, we brought in a music box. Okay. Because, you know, I grew up around here, and I've known about Sarah for like six or eight, and the story, and we knew she was musically. A supposed a music major, 
Right. We knew the stories of the singing. Yes, we did. The piano. We have heard it. And we've actually got her on video. She actually, we put the music box on the table over on the <coughs> side. And we got her on video, and she actually, the music box she bounced all the way across the table. I apologize. We did. Uh, we got all the girls together, and they circled the, uh, the logo. And we had a young lady, the daughter of one of our members, that we had basically positioned herself as if she fell because, you know, the whole legend of we didn't get any real significant while the rest of the guys we went up on different tiers just taking a picture down and we didn't get much reaction at all but yeah that, that was about the only thing we tried because we figured okay it's supposed to be why she was i guess she was singing the alma mater all the way down or 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 what but we figured yeah, yeah you know that's one version but we figured you know the gabrielle girls going back to when it was uh housing that perhaps that would work and you know that what I, from what I understand, several of the haunting experiences people have re relate around music. I mean, considering it's Mansfield and there's lots of music majors here, not even a, just a Sarah thing, but the one, you know, the common story of hearing music coming from the upstairs mm -hmm. where the, the practice rooms used to be and everything. Like, So, I mean, a lot of the different stories we've heard, at least, you know, as long as I've worked here, have always kind of revolved around music, so it makes sense. I mean, that's... They say that even in Butler, too. Yeah. In Butler, they say that if you sing, like, I, I, I'm a music major, and when I first got here, they're like, if you're in the practice room alone, like, late at night, like, and you're, like, flat or you're sharp or something, the lights will flicker, and they do. I know you're, so I agree. You know campus security fun. that when we were here the second time, they told us many stories about Butler, and mm. it's really freaky. Didn't I just going in at night, and things, <laughs> mm -hmm. the current, um, when they weren't trying to give us tickets. I don't know. <laughs> They're very diligent, I'll say that. But uh, yeah, like I said, you know, I'm not one that has a lot of experiences, but I was down, one of the nice things about being from the lead is I get to kind of go around, and I was down on the first floor. There wasn't a team on the first floor, and I could hear music, what seemed to be coming out of that end of the building, and it was like, wait a minute, I know there's not a piano there. Walk through, there was nothing playing, it seemed as soon as I got to the back left hand side, it just disappeared. And again, a few of the uh, the responses during an EVP session. I know that one night uh, I was in with these two. They were up on the guys up on the fourth floor, and from the circulation deck, I could hear a woman talking. You couldn't make out the words, but you knew it was a woman, and she would say something, it would be a pause, and then it would pick up again, like she was carrying on a conversation. And I walked out to the atrium, and I could still hear it. And I asked, I asked these guys when they came down, did you hear a woman talking? And they had been conversing with one of the entities up there. But it was, and I've heard it twice. Um, it's, it's that whispery, you can tell it's a woman, but you can't understand what she's I get the theory that they're on it that is, if you will, plane of existence, but they're a little bit off frequency. They're not quite in tune to where, where we are. It, again, theory. But that's why it's that whispery and not quite always clear that we can't. It's like a radio station that's slightly off channel. And they're trying to break. I'm just saying, I'm glad this wasn't just before I hadn't seen it. I just want to say, no one told me she was a like that music card. No one told me that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, I mean, I had no freaking idea. And I'm glad that all that stuff happened.